Would I have local connection through my aunt and uncle? Now this is a question that's coming from the YouTube comments section and as per usual with these questions the answer is a little bit more complicated than it first might seem. So in order to answer the question I'm actually going to give a few hypothetical situations but before I get into it I can't emphasise enough how important it is to understand the difference between local connection within part 6 of the Housing Act and part 7 because lots of people who are actually homeless they get advice to fill in the online application form and what they don't realise is the council's not treating it as a homeless application they're just treating it as a part six application and what that means is that the local connection criteria for part six is far more strict than it is for part seven as, a, as an example if you had lived in settled accommodation in an area for six out of the last 12 months you would have local connection under part seven but in particularly places like London unless you've lived in that area for the last 10 or 15 years you won't qualify and so what happens is people get told that they don't have local connection there's nothing the council can do and then they kind of give up looking for housing that way so that's the first thing to understand is that part Part 6 and Part 7 of the Housing Act, which you may well encounter in the course of, of having or being in housing need, is actually very different in terms of how it's actually applied. Now, before we get into the, the detail of Part 7, it's just worth looking at a couple of bits from the Homelessness Code of Guidance. So I'm looking at paragraph 10.14 here, which says that the overriding consideration should always be whether the applicant has a connection in real terms of an area, and the Housing Authority must consider the applicant's individual circumstances, particularly any exceptional circumstances, before reaching a decision. Now something that's interesting about local connection is that it is not actually set out in itself in the Housing Act. What local authorities did was they basically came to their own agreement which they all are supposed to use and lots of councils have been criticised by judges because they apply those criteria far too rigidly. So it's probably helpful just to explain what the, the main criteria are. Basically there's three main criteria and some like more uh, obscure ones as well. So the first one is within part seven you've got local connection if you've lived in settled accommodation in the area for either six out of the last 12 months and or three out of the last five years. So that's the first one. The second one is you've got close family and in the local authority agreement it talks about parents, partners, siblings and adult children who've lived in the area for at least five years. And then thirdly, you've got where they've got an, a permanent employment contract in the area. Now, there are equivalents in all of those criteria within Part 6, but as I say, they're often much more uh, strict. So again, with family association within Part 6, there would be a requirement that you are giving or receiving care to that family member in order to qualify. As one example, there are other kind of caveats as well with it. And so those are the main criteria. There's a fourth criteria, which is like this special circumstance criteria, which may be where, for example, you've got someone who's been sleeping rough for a long time and they haven't had settled accommodation anywhere. So in, in that case, there's a separate test that needs to be done. That's probably going to be another video that I do about that. You've also got people who are, who've been in care. They've just maybe reached their 21st birthday. And because they've been moved around, they haven't been able to accrue re uh, local connection in the, in the ordinary way. And you'd also have people coming through the immigration system or the asylum system system where they haven't been in the country long enough maybe they don't have any family here either so they wouldn't be able to qualify in the ordinary way and there are paragraphs within the homelessness code of guidance which applies to each of those situations plus there's an even more obscure one which is where someone has a particularly uh, kind of unique medical condition and they can only get treatment in a certain area and I've never seen that person in my in my casework I did hear about a story where someone had their intestines on the outside of them and they, they could only get treatment in one place but I've not seen that myself so that's the that's the kind of the big picture definition and as I say family connection within that definition there has to be they have to have lived in the area for the last five years and it has to be parents siblings partners or adult children but luckily there is actually some flexibility in how this should all be applied so this question of would I get local connection through my aunt and uncle is certainly something which is possible but you have to do a little bit of work to demonstrate why you have got sufficient closeness with that support network in order to qualify. Now, at this point, I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation just to explain how this would work. And in order to do this, I'm just going to give the example of myself. Let's say I live in Bedford Borough, which I do. Let's say all of my family lived in Bedford Borough, except my aunt and uncle who lived in Central Beds, which is the next borough over, about 10 miles down the road. And let's say my job's in Bedford Borough as well. Now, let's say my house burns down, so I'm homeless, uh, I'm a British citizen, I've been here all my life, so I'm eligible for assistance, and I'm automatically in priority need because my house just burned down. I can go to any local authority in the country, but ultimately what's going to happen there is whilst they have a duty to put me in temporary accommodation initially, they're going to refer me back to an area where I've got local connection. So that's, in one sense, in most circumstances, there's no point doing it that way. 
but I can try to apply to central beds and try to make the argument that I have local connection to central beds through my aunt and uncle. So let's say I do that, I approach the council, I tell them my house has burned down and I ask them for help, so I've triggered section 184. Uh, I've also given the council reasons to believe that I might be homeless, might be eligible, might be in priority need. So they should immediately put me in temporary accommodation. And only when I'm in temporary accommodation, they can then start looking at the question of, first of all, whether I have local connection to central beds. So the fact I've definitely got local connection to Bedford Borough, at this point is not relevant. They have to ask the question, do I have local connection to central beds before they can work out what they're going to do with me? And at this point I might raise the fact that actually my aunt and uncle have lived there, they've lived there for more than five years, so it's certainly possible that I would qualify as having a local connection there. The next thing they need to ask is essentially how close I am to my aunt and uncle. And this is where the code of guidance does not give a lot of helpful detail unfortunately. Uh, so you have to start looking at case law, and there's a case called Osbeck. Uh, it involved Ipswich and Portsmouth, I think, from 2004 or something. It's spelled O-Z-B-E-K. If you want to Google it, you can get the full transcript. And essentially in that case, you have this discussion where the judge tries to uh, examine or explore how local connection works in practice. And there's a few absolute things that the judge says. So, for example, the judge says, if you are raised by your grandparents or if you're raised by your aunt and uncle, let's say, then that would be pretty clear cut that you have local connection, that that relationship would qualify uh, as local connection. So let's say, for example, I grew up in care or you know my, my parents were not able to provide care for me and I was then placed with my aunt and uncle, then that would be a fairly straightforward argument to make. But that's obviously quite... Uh, unique and, and not particularly usual so that would be one extreme another extreme would be where the, the family member is so distantly related that it can't possibly qualify and there's an example i think in one case where it's like a second cousin twice removed or something where that was shown to not qualify as local connection so we've kind of got this like quite a large range here of, of how this might work in practice and in the Osbeck case, the judge gives a few other examples or a few other principles that you can start looking at. And I'm going to read these out because I can't remember them. So, for example, the judge uses the phrase essential to the well-being of the person or the applicant. And that what that's basically saying is that I would have local connection to my aunt and uncle because I'm so close to them that it's essential for my well-being that I continue to be close to them. So that's one thing it says. Again, that's quite a high threshold. Uh, another thing, another phrase that the judge uses is this phrase of, of um, whether the relationship affords irreplaceable placeable personal assistance to the applicant so again that's quite a high threshold you'd imagine uh, which wouldn't apply to a lot of aunts and uncles but equally the judge says that actually you may have parents but you've not had no contact with them for years and in that case it's unlikely to mean that you've got local connection so you can kind of see how it goes both ways and there's um if we go to the code of guidance i think it's 10.9 uh, let me just bring it up yeah, so for the purposes of family connection, that's what C is there. Um, where the applicant raises family associations, this may extend beyond partners, parents, adult children or siblings. They may include associations with other family members such as step-parents, grandparents, grandchildren, aunts or uncles, provided there are sufficiently close links to form fr in the form of frequent contact, commitment or dependency. And I would say that those three words, well those four words, frequent contact, commitment and dependency are, are going to be key to whether you've got local connection through that family association. But interestingly, it goes goes on to say, uh, and in fact there's, there's two interesting things it says, so it says that for example the actual closeness of the family association may count for more than the degree of blood relation, so it may be that I don't get on with my parents in Bedford Borough and I do get on with my aunt and uncle and therefore that would potentially mean that the, the, the degree of blood relation is less relevant than the closeness I've got with, that, with that, uh, those people. And then goes on to say a housing authority should not identify local connection through family associations with an area other than the one where the applicant positively wants to live. And this is really brings into this idea that actually you may have a mother and father living in an area, but if you don't want to be associated with them, if you don't have any contact with them, then that would not qualify as having local connection. So central beds couldn't refer me back to Bedford Borough on the basis of my, my um, parental, uh, the fact that my parents live here, unless, you know, unless I actually want to be with them. So going back to this hypothetical example, so let's say I've made an argument to, to Central Beds to say actually I do have sufficient closeness with my aunt and uncle. At that point they should then stop. So it's not a question for Central Beds of where do I have more local connection. It's not this kind of relative test. It's an absolute one. Do I have a local connection to Central Beds? If the answer is yes, then Central Beds are going to end up having that main homeless duty to me. If the answer was no, and let's say the relationship with my aunt and uncle was too vague, too kind of ambiguous and not close enough, then at that point they would say, OK, you know, you, you're, you're in priority need, you're homeless, but you don't have local connection to us. You do have local connection to Bedford. We're therefore going to 
go through the formal referral mechanism, which is I think section 198 or something, where they would contact Bedford Borough and they would wait until Bedford Borough had arranged temporary accommodation for me before they get rid of me. So it's not the same thing as just telling me, oh, you need to go to Bedford Borough. They, Central Beds will need to put me in temporary accommodation first, make those inquiries into local connection. If I don't have local connection to Central Beds, but I do elsewhere, that's the point they can then refer me back. So I think that's basically all I want to say about it. I don't think there's anything else that will really come into it. If you find this stuff interesting, if you work in the sector, we do online training where we cover exactly this kind of information. We get really good feedback. You know, literally, I, I love reading the feedback at the end of the day because a lot of people get a lot of stuff out of it. It's really jam-packed with information. So if you're interested in that, do check out the Eventbrite link in the comments section and do keep the questions coming. And also, if you'd like to see more of this stuff, obviously subscribe to the channel. And if you know anyone who's in a bit of a situation with their housing, do feel free to share these videos with them. The idea of this whole thing is basically to ensure that people understand how the system works a bit better in order for them to actually access the assistance they're owed.